Moving on uh, to another uh, slightly less common um, uh, fracture, but that's a uh, fra fracture of the femoral head. This is question five uh, from your exam module. Examine uh, asking the uh, asking you to uh, look at these images and make the um, select the image uh, that uh, is associated with a Pipkin II femoral fracture. And if you start from the left and move forward, you can clearly see uh, a fracture uh, dislocation um, is the first one, uh, and the uh, second one. The, uh, the patient has a femoral head fracture, but there's also a posterior wall fracture. The central uh, center uh, picture shows a uh, small inferior femoral neck fracture or femoral head fracture, and uh, the fracture is seen on the CT scan, um, second from the right, uh, it has a fracture line that extends above the fovea, and consequently uh, is uh, the answer, the correct answer here, for a Pipkin II fracture. Uh, which uh, is a femoral head fracture, which is divine, uh, defined by a fracture line superior to the fovea. It's important to look at the difference between a Pipkin a 1 and a Pipkin 2 fracture because uh, Pipkin 2 fractures commonly require uh, fixation. When you look at uh, these uh, uh, femoral head fractures, they're most commonly associated with hip dislocations. And the size and um, location of the fracture uh, can be dependent upon the position of the hip at the time of dislocation. 5 to 15 percent of posterior hip dislocations are associated with a femoral head fracture. So anytime you have to reduce a femoral head uh, or reduce a, a hip dislocation, be uh, particularly cog uh, cog cognizant of the, uh, the, the presence of a fracture. <clears throat> also, uh, one of the things that you may see queried uh, is the potential for ipsilateral knee uh, ligamentous injury. These uh, fractures commonly occur, as do the dislocations with a, uh, the patient in a flexed posture and the knee hitting a dashboard or a fixed object um, in a, a sudden deceleration. And that can cause ligamentous damage to the knee as well. This is the Pipkin uh, fracture classification. I would uh, likely you'll see some questions with regard to this as the one that we've already uh, reviewed. Fracture uh, types 1 and 2 are going to involve uh, the, uh, the fracture fragment, whether it extends above or below the, uh, the fovea. Fracture uh, type 2 is above the fovea. And uh, fracture type 3, Pipkin 3, is associated with a femoral neck fracture. Uh, and uh, in that circumstance, both need to be stabilized. Uh, in fracture type uh, 4, there is a um, acetabular, typically a posterior wall uh, fracture, uh, that occurs in addition to the uh, ephemeral head fracture. So uh, looking at these, again, it's uh, going to be important. The questions are likely to focus upon what to do, where the location of the fracture is, and how do you evaluate it. Um, you want to try to get these fractures uh, associated with a dislocation reduced as quickly as possible to decrease your risk of avascular necrosis. And after reduction, a CT scan is uh, essentially always indicated to review for uh, the presence of intraarticular fragments, um, a uh, look for uh, associated uh, pelvic fractures and or impaction injuries. Non-operative treatment uh, can, uh, can be considered in those Pipkin 1 fractures um, in which there is essentially uh, less than one millimeter of step off. The uh, fracture reduces nearly anatomically within the hip, uh, and the hip joint itself is stable. Uh, you need to evaluate that with serial radiographs, and the patients are trip, uh, treated with, uh, with toe-touch weight-bearing. And those <clears throat> fractures, Pipkin 2, with more than a, uh, a, um, a millimeter of step off, uh, open reduction internal fixation is uh, typically uh, indicated. Those with Pipkin 4 fractures, uh, in which there's um, acetabular uh, fracture, uh, with minimal displacement of the uh, Pipkin fracture, you can consider approaching those um, uh, through, or excuse me, with uh, 
uh, with a stable uh, reduction of the hip and a stable posterior wall uh, with dislocation, those patients can be managed with, uh, with a um, anterior approach uh, uh, fixation of the, of the Pipkin fracture. Techniques, um, there are some questions that you may see with regard to management of these um, Pipkin 4 fractures, those in which there's an acetabular fracture and an, uh, the need to uh, approach the uh, fracture fragment, which is commonly in the anterior half or uh, uh, coronal uh, half of the femoral head. And in that circumstance, a Coker-Langenbach approach or with a uh, digastric osteotomy or a sliding uh, trochanteric osteotomy uh, is indicated uh, to avoid uh, further injury to the blood supply of the femoral head. Complications associated with these, uh, there's a uh, overall uh, high incidence of heterotopic ossification seen uh, can be up to, uh, up to 6 to 64 percent. Avascular necrosis also is common uh, with these, anywhere between uh, 20, uh, 0 to 20 percent, 23 percent. And patients in whom <clears throat> there is a associated dislocation uh, and uh, a long time to relocation, sciatic nerve uh, neuropraxia can be, uh, can be found. And commonly because of the uh, contusive nature of these to the articular cartilage, degenerative uh, osteoarthritis is a late sequelae that's uh, very uh, frequently found. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. We'd love to hear your thoughts and what you'd like to see next in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media.